In the previous video, I set up the idea that we need to find these coefficients that allow us to express a general eigenstate in terms of our energy eigenstates. So how do we go about doing that? So again, be careful about notation. Here I'm going to talk about the sum being over n, so n equals 1 to infinity. And I want to start by saying, OK, how do I find the value of a specific c sub m? Don't call it n here. So well, one way to do this is knowing that this c sub m is going to relate to phi sub m, right? So, so this gives you the kind of how much of that, how much of this energy eigenstate is in our general eigenstate. So if we actually, and there's kind of two different ways to set it up, but if I set it up this way, right, and say, okay, let me do an inner product between these two, right? When I write it out in terms of the ket notation, what that would look like is here, phi m of x, and then I have that um, summation over n, c sub m, and then phi n x. Well, so if we move this inside, we now have our sum over n, c n, but then we basically have phi m, phi n inner product. And this is where we use that idea of the orthonormality of our states. So if m does not equal n, it's zero. If m equals one, if m equals n, this is equal to one. So that's where we use our delta function, mn. So what that means is we now say every term is zero except where n equals m. So over that summation, it only pulls out one value, and that's where n equals m, so we're left with cm. So this is a critical step. I started by saying, okay, this is expanded as the series. I'm now taking the inner product with one specific energy eigenstate, and now I see that that allows me to pull out one specific value of cm. And that's what we are trying to find. So now what we do is remember that now that we're working in the position space, there's a different way to write this. So cm is equal to this inner product. But now, how we need to write this, and I'm going to write this in general from negative infinity to infinity. And the reason I'm going to write it that way is that this is true in general. This doesn't have to be the, enter the infinite well or the finite well. This is true in general for any state expanded in its energy basis. So um, for an infinite well, you could turn this then into a limit from 0 to L because your wave function is 0 outside, but I'll write this in the general form. And so since this is the bra, we would need to write this as our, our phi star, so your energy eigenstate complex conjugated, and it's going to be a specific one, but you can use that as a variable, right? So you can plug in m, n, whatever you want, I'm using m as the index here, and then whatever your wave function is, and then you integrate it. So the idea being that we get to calculate what our coefficients are by doing this integral. So keep in mind that this is your energy eigenstate of the system you're talking about. So you have to know what was your potential so that then you could find what your energy eigenstates were. We don't have very many different systems that we use in this class, so you're probably going to just be told it's your, your infinite well, your finite well, though probably just your infinite well. Eventually we'll see the harmonic oscillator, we'll have some other states here. And then this, you literally have a functional form of, right? This is literally going to be some sort of function. And so from this, you can then create this mathematical relationship for what C sub m are. Now, there's going to be some really hard math here. And the idea being that oftentimes, we actually need an infinite number of C sub m to really create what our original general wave function is. And so you can imagine this as being a series, right? So maybe you get a form that looks something like c sub m is 1 over m to the fourth, right? That tells you the higher the m is, right, the higher the energy is, the smaller your coefficient. You can then ask the question, well, if I add those up, do I act does it actually normalize? Don't worry about that right now. I'm just trying to show a picture. You might also see results 
that are things like if m is odd, it's zero. And if m is even, that's where you have, you know, two pi l over, you know, maybe m squared. So there's going to be things like this that happen. And now go back and remember symmetry, that there's going to be certain symmetry arguments where if our function looks a certain way, we can say, oh, actually only our even m's contribute because our function has odd symmetry, things like that. So please, um, please recognize that this math step is really big here. So I'll go through some more examples of pulling it out. But your final goal that you're working towards is to come up with some function, some definition for m. And they're not all going to be the same. There's going to be a relationship that actually depends on m itself. And you should ex expect to get complicated things like this, where the odd values and the even values are different. So hopefully this helps. We'll do some examples.